What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. This week we're back on the 71 Twin Turbo Chevelle. I know you guys have all been patiently waiting for this content. Well, here's the day. We finally got our goodies back from our boys at Mango Bay Metalworks. And I must say, they completely knocked it out the park, man. We got our dash here. This is our recessed for our Motec screen. We have this for our Alpine head unit. And then you come on over to this really trick console, man. Look at this thing. The detail that they put in this is awesome. So this is our, our spots for our Restomod AC vents, our Restomod controls. We got this slick cup holder set up. We have a uh, pad going in here to charge your iPhone. This is for our AMG shift lever. Dave's gonna have to get all this stuff mocked back up at the car. So that way our guy from E3 has somewhere to land his padding and all the upholstery he's gonna be doing. This car is really close to pulling apart for paint. So while Dave's in the interior of this thing, I'm gonna be driving up north to Florida to go see our boys that attack the clock to pick up our BMW dual clutch transmission as well as our paddle shifter steering wheel. So we got a lot of work to do, let's go. While we were waiting for these pieces to come in, I made some standoffs and welded them to the tunnel and the rear deck here and the front of the tunnel. And now our console has a place to rest onto and to be bolted into. These pieces are fitting really nice in here. The top dash mating with the bottom half of the dash and then the transition into the console is great. All that is gonna get wrapped for interior, so it's just loosely fit right now. Now that all of this is in here and mocked up, we need to focus on the back seats. We had some racing buckets that were floating around the shop, and even though these two bucket seats fit in these two areas, they didn't have the contours needed to fill all the gaps. So we're gonna be modifying those two seats cutting them open, making them wider, adding some panels to them. So that way when they come to do the interior, there's a nice transition base to build off of. David's got the first seat cut up like a little piece of pie. We got it set back in here. He's got these two sides cut and rolled over. He's got a little relief cut on both sides. At this point, I think what we're gonna do is make another relief cut up here, try to get the upper section kind of manipulated back a little bit, as well as this section here. He's gonna try to get that to fold over. The front came out pretty nice, so we will have to weld a new piece of aluminum in here, and then he'll be able to get this roll and bring it down to the base of the, of the floor pan. I think we are on the right track. Okay, so we got the first seat put back together, widened out, it's really hot right now. So before we put that back in the car to make our roll piece off the front, we're gonna start with seat number two. Start marking and chopping. So now that we got our seats widened, we need, also need to finish them out this direction, coming to this hump right here. So this is just a test piece. As you can see, we're gonna need to attach to the seat here, have a nice curved contour, and end about an inch and a half before the hump line. What we're gonna do first is cut the seat straight so we have a nice straight edge to work off of. Then we can take a measurement, cut it a little bit long, put it in a slip roller. Once we get the contour correct, then we could cut back the material at the bottom as needed to bring it up to get this to match perfectly. There's some factory bracketry that's welded to the floor and that we're gonna have to get rid of because it's right in the way of us coming down. So 
So we got our seats and our center console mounted. All of this is gonna be foamed over and then carpeted over. So we have this line coming here. He wants us to continue on over the seat all the way to the edge, same on the other side. And then also we'll have to fill in the gaps on either side here. We got our first top two sections sort of roughed in here. I did more than just some tacks to keep in place. I'm gonna do the other welds where there are some gaps that I can massage it easier out on the bench. So the next spot I'm gonna work on, there's sort of two sections here and here that need to be filled in. Just enough that there's a transition in each direction. So I'm gonna take some measurements. So I got all my pieces laid out in here, made this first piece, made it with the contour at the top of the seat. Then based upon where that laid, we made this top piece to fill in the gap between the back rack. And then to fill in the sides, we made these two small pieces. So everything's all tacked in. Now we're gonna pull the whole thing out and then pull out of the car, weld it on the bench. We got our first seat mounted in here. Now we have a transition from our center console, swooping the contour of the seat back out. Fits nicely up against our side panel here. All this doesn't need to be beautiful because it's all gonna be foamed over and then carpeted over and finished out with the interior. But it just needs to be some sort of structure and flow for everything to have a backing plate for. We're gonna Go to the other side, mimic sort of the same design, probably the same design process. So we got all of our seats back in with our extra baffling around them. You know, it's not finished off or anything, but it's not meant to. It's all gonna be foamed over material on top of that. It's just something that gives structure for the interior materials to sit on. So all we gotta do now is wait for Lee to come back and um, give us the final go. All right, a few months back, you guys saw us pull out the DCT transmission out of the Chevelle. I brought it to the north side of Florida to Mount Dora, which is a little outside of Orlando, to attacking the clock racing. The boys over there had to basically take it apart, do a bunch of stuff to the internals. We also ordered a steering wheel with a paddle shifter from them. So while I'm there, I'm gonna pick that up. The transmission is the last thing that we gotta do to get this thing 100% done and ready for paint. This front end is up on jack stands because without the transmission, the motor is not sitting in here exactly correctly. So our exhaust on this side wasn't able to mount up correctly. So we need to get the transmission put in so we could attach this side to our Garrett Turbo. The last couple of weeks we've been doing a couple little minor things. David final finished up our down pipes coming off our blowout valves, deleted the side marker lights and used that spot for, for this pipe. This pipe still has to get modified a little bit. He also deleted our door locks. You guys have seen in a previous episode, we added power locks, keyless entry to this car, so we didn't need those anymore. And we've been doing a bunch of work on the, our interior. Our interior is pretty much ready for Lee from E3 Customs to come on over here. Then boom, we're gonna be pulling all this stuff out of the engine compartment, and we will be sending it off for paint and body. So 
Super excited. I got a four hour drive. I gotta go. It's a real, real race shop, man. There he is, the man. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having us out here. No games around here, man. You guys saw me showcase this car over at PRI show. All the carbon fiber body parts on it. This thing is slick. And this is what we came for right here, right? Yeah. Is this her? This is yours. Oh, wow. Look at that. Right, that's the, that uh, the goodies? that's the witchcraft right there. So oh. that's the mechatronics, and basically what we're doing is hacking it. BMW spent a fortune on this sophisticated setup, and what we're gonna do now is control it. But a lot of people are asking why we went with a BMW transmission. I mean, it produces 30 millisecond or faster shifts. So it literally can shift faster than the ECU can do like fuel cut and all that stuff. So for racing, that's that's what we want. We can keep both hands on the wheel and just like bang through gears. And even drag racing, this is like a super popular transmission for drag racing. It can hold up to like a thousand foot pounds of torque from the factory. You just need to change out the clutch if you want to make that kind of, you know, foot pounds of torque. But also like you can drive this thing like a grandma too. You can actually have it, you can put it in automatic where if you program it, you can just drive it like a regular car. It'll make all the shifts for you. And what's really cool is you can have like a full racing transmission but also it acts just like a regular old BMW if you wanted it. So not only are we picking this up today, we're also getting the, the paddle shifter. Yep. So this is the other thing that we came to pick up. This is for a Nintendo, right? Yeah, so this is essentially like our motorsports grade steering wheel that we use in our race cars but this is like a little bit more stripped down street version. Then we've got our like double magnet like shifters on and a really nice like motorsports race car feel. Oh yeah, that does feel nice. Yeah, it doesn't feel like a button. It feels like you're actually doing something. That's that's not the steering wheel. Where's the steering wheel? The steering wheel's right here. Oh, it's in the box. Yeah. There she is. Pretty cool steering wheel. It's the exact same one that are, is in Porsche GT3 cup cars. And it's the same one you have in your race car right it there. It is, yep. So let's see, this is the dumb down version. Let's see the the real the real deal. So yeah. Oh yeah. I didn't think we would need all this stuff. And because it's not a race car, it's more of a street car. He eliminated yeah. all these buttons and we just have the two, so. Yeah, we've got like pit speed and push to talk for radio and traction control engine map. So it's all good for like race cars, but like for a street car, this is, it's way too much yeah it's it's pretty complicated all right so we got the steering wheel we got the paddle shifters we got the transmission adapter for your drive shaft got your adapter plate got your computer got your oil cooler adapter all it's right it's on you now that's us it just took me forever but it's on you now <laughs> yeah it wasn't me it was him we're ready to go we're all gotta do is load it into my truck but meanwhile sean's gonna uh show us the attacking the clock shop. We do everything from composite work to roll cages to motorsports wiring to you know, pretty much everything, so, uh, track support on stuff. We made all the carbon on that car except for the wing. Really? Yep. And what is this thing? Is this a customer's? Yeah, so uh, this is a customer car. Uh, this is debuted at SEMA last year, but essentially it was like a completely stock street car when we got it. So yeah, it was just a stock Audi RS3. Um, but we've got the uh, LMS factory racing wide body on it, which is really difficult to do. All the doors are carbon fiber and you know, this car weighs absolutely nothing. You know, but we did all the cage work, all the, you know, pretty much everything on the interior. Essentially the whole car is carbon fiber except for this rear quarter panel. So we're on to the next phase of basically getting it track ready. It really takes a lot to make a car like this go to the track, run flawlessly and, you know, do its thing. And what are you doing with this thing? Uh, this is cool. It's a little Corolla 86. So it's got like a, you know, JDM front on it, but this is like a little bit of a sleeper car. It's got a black top swap, but we just did like a full motor refresh on it and doing a Garrett G25. And there, here's a roll, a roll cage in progress. Yeah. So this is a Audi TT RS. This car makes like 650 wheel. It's a really fast car, but uh, we're kind of dialing up the safety now, so we're doing new sawbell seats, full, you know, our full race spec roll cage. That's a boss. <laughs> a boss lady. And this is your fat, your fab area in here. He's practicing to be a DJ. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> Mix it up, man. I've never seen anyone put the stick the the uh, paper on a table and yeah, do it like that. that. That's actually a pretty good idea. So I just learned something. There you go. Yeah, so it's kind of our little humble fab area, but we get a lot of stuff done right I now. see that. You got. It doesn't really matter how big it is or what you have, as long as you know how to use what you have. Yeah, see the cars that come out. So. That's it. Well, thanks for having us. Yeah, man. And thank you for getting the transmission done. Finally. Now we can get it back to the shop, get it in the car, and get that thing out for paint nice. before my customer kills me. and it's been revealing some more work for us. So around the bell housing, the original starter for the BMW trans sat a little bit higher than where the LS starter goes. So we have to cut this section out for the snout of our starter. With the Dami Works kit, we're gonna still retain the LS starter and an LS flywheel to get the engine started. From there, we've made a big change to our transmission tunnel. So it's got a fabricated tunnel in it that the old body bracing no longer grabs onto the sheet metal here. So we have to push all this up to make room for our drive shaft because our yoke, you can see, sits pretty high up in the tunnel and this is our center line. It would run right into all this bracing here. So these are gonna have to get cut and moved up and then we'll have room for our drive shaft. We got our two pieces cut out. There's one, there's the other. And then I used this Piece of weld rod, come up here and sort of make a general shape. So I am going to take some one inch pipe and cut it to this length, bend it. And then once we get it close, we could put the actual tube up there, see how it looks. And then we'll figure out exactly how to tie it in to here and here. I have a bent bar here and Boop. comes into the tunnel just like this, matches the contour. What I'm gonna do is start cutting the side of the tubing, a vertical cut, and that will allow the whole piece to raise up to the top of the tunnel. It will also give us a flat edge to weld onto. So what we're gonna do is make a plate that boxes this whole piece in, comes up here, 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 to be welded all around, one on this side as well, and then the tube, the flat spot on the tube, that's gonna get cut out can sit flush against each of those plates and get welded on either side. So we got our front two plates cut and cleaned up, they sit nice and flush up against the body. I put some slight bends into them to get them to work. Before we weld anything, I'm going to make our hoop piece fit to our plates. Start doing some cutting on either side and give us a flat surface to weld. We have whittled away at the sides of our bar to make some flat sections. Now it rests nice and flush against each side and reaches the top of our tunnel. got both of our support bars welded in. The last thing we're gonna do is make some end caps to close off these ends. Got all of our end caps welded. Ground down, looks nice and finished now. That means no water can 
get up into these pipes and route them out. This is pretty much complete for now. Supports that used to run here to here, here to here, are now replicated with a one inch tubing and probably a lot thicker than the original material, which is super thin. So we are under the Chevelle and I've just cut this shaft down to size. You can see this is the joint that attaches to the column side and this is the joint that attaches to the rack side. This joint is almost perfectly straight and this one is going smooth. I think we are all good on the steering as long as we make the exhaust clear this joint. It clears everything else. We're able to get our headers, our exhaust finalized, our downpipes. Dave made some stands for our turbos, so these things are now set in space and they're not going to be moving. So this finalizes our engine bay. It also, we were able to finalize our interior. We got our really nice uh, attack the clock steering wheel with their paddle shifter box installed. It's looking sharp. We also got our MoTeX screen put in and our Alpine dash. We just kind of wanted to make sure everything fit before we send it out for uh, getting upholstered. We got our AC controls. Those things are looking sharp. We also finalized our shift lever and our iPad charging station. So the car is looking great. And this is gonna be the last time you guys see it like this because we're getting ready to strip this thing all back down and we're gonna send it out for paint and body. So that'll be on the next episode. You guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for being patient on the con on the content for the Chevelle. I know you guys have all been waiting and it's exciting because this is it, man. We're on the home stretch. So before you know it, we'll be starting this thing up and doing some burnouts. We'll see you on the next one.